Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey now, today we're going to take a look at Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards Rumble at Castle Tentakill from Cryptozoic Entertainment. <laughs> Sorry, I'm contractually obligated to say the name like that. Uh, no, that's not true. This, as you can probably tell, is a very silly game from Cryptozoic. They originally had um, their first set of this game, which was subtitled Duel at Mount Skull's Fire, which in itself was ridiculous since the game goes up to six players, which isn't really a duel at that point. But you can actually mix these two sets together. They're standalone, and you can mix uh, all the cards together. And the theme of the game is, very simply, you are wizards who are battling each other. That's it. You're just trying to kill each other in the best and fastest way possible using all kinds of crazy spells. And what the expansion, standalone expansion, adds is the ability to summon creatures as well that actually stick around. So I've never played the original Epic Spell Wars. This was new to me. Let's go ahead and take a brief look at how this game is played. Then we're going to come back and I'll let you know what I think. All right, the goal of Epic Spell Wars, Battle of the Wiz, the, okay, whatever, you get it. Epic Spell Wars <laughs> is to be the first uh, wizard to get two of these last wizard standing tokens. Now, you can also play a shorter game where you're just playing three matches and adding up points, but either way, and I do recommend that, by the way, but the main way to play the game is to go for these last wizard standing tokens, which, of course, requires you to be the last wizard standing in uh, every game, uh, which essentially just means your whole goal is just to kill the other wizards. I didn't set up other wizard placards out there, but this is how your setup would be. You have a wizard card that has your life points, which you'll keep track of, which always starts at 20. This here is Cuddle Wizard Sir Kitty of Purrington. And then you also have a blood tracker. Blood is like a fuel for your spell. Some spells will say, spend some blood and you get a more powerful effect, but you start off with none of it. Other cards or special effects are going to give you more blood as time goes on. You have a main deck of spell cards, which I'm gonna get back to in a second. And every round you're gonna start off with eight of those. You have treasure cards and you have dead wizard cards. When you die in this game, it sucks and you're out of the round and there's no chance you're going to get a last wizard standing token but in exchange for that you get to draw a dead wizard card which gives you a bonus for when you come back to life which is inevitable and i'll show you some of those in a minute and you have a standee now a lot of cryptozoic games especially uh, older ones have this standee which is completely useless and i think it was useless in the first epic spell wars game duel at mount skulls fire but it actually has a purpose in this game some cards give you bonuses if you're the one that holds the standee. The game comes with four dice, but you should probably get more. And I'll show you some of the other characters that you could uh, choose as well. Now, as far as I know, none of the characters matter. You don't have any kind of special power. It's purely for flavor. So here, I'll show you some of these less objectionable ones. You have, uh, and by the way, let me, let me say that right off the bat. I'm showing you some of the less objectionable cards and characters in this game, but there are a lot of cards that are clearly R-rated or at the very least PG-13 rated. So please keep that in mind if you're thinking of getting this game. Here you have Manly Banger, the rock god. You have Skullzor, I guess I'll show you. Oh, it's the same art on both sides. You have Skullzor and <laughs> Granny Fluffer Butter, the sweetest witch, and Angelica Angel Face, the angelic angel of misery who looks very pleasant. I think I dated someone like her before. And let me show you some of the different spell cards. Now, spell cards are going to have different stats. The important thing about the spell cards, maybe I'll actually show you how the gameplay actually works first. On your turn, what you're going to do simultaneously with the other players, um, there's actually no turns in this game per se, uh, each player is going to put some spell cards face down in front of them, anywhere from one to three. The reason why it's one to three is because there, every card has a source, a, uh, a source quality, and a delivery system. Uh, that's the three parts of the spell. And when you have all three parts of a spell laid out, they make a little panorama so they'll just to easily identify themselves as those types of spells. Uh, and each one has a different special ability that they're gonna contribute to the spell and you can only play up to one of each different type. If you just choose to play all three of them out, you'll lay them out like that. The, the thing about it is, 
if you choose to go with up to three spells, your spell is going to be slower than people who choose to only use one or two cards. In other words, they leave one component out of the spell. So when, you, when everyone's laid down their cards and locked in their decisions, whoever has the least amount of cards in front of them is going to flip the cards over and resolve them first. And if anyone is tied, then uh, if they have a creature in their spell, there's an initiative rating on the creature that will tell them uh, how whoever has the higher number is going to get to act first. So how many spells you play and which spells you play has makes a difference as to who gets to resolve first, which could matter because you could die before you even have a chance to cast your spell. So let's take a look at a few of these. And by the way, there are wild magic spells which just count as anything. Uh, you play the spell and then you draw the, the first one of that particular type you get off the top of the deck. But in any event, let's actually go through quite a few of these. Um, they're all pretty basic. A lot of them just say things like deal damage to the foe on your left or right or deal damage to the strongest foe. But here we have uh, Queen of the Dead's Harvesting Land Shark. So you have Source, the Quality, and the Delivery System. Now, the Delivery System in this version of Epic Spell Wars are all creatures. And the interesting thing about creatures are if you roll high enough with a power die, you actually get to keep them in play. So what do I mean by that? Well, for any kind of uh, delivery system for these creatures, you get, that's what the dice are for. You'll roll the power die, and you roll a power die equal to the amount of matching spell symbols that you've played in your spell. So in this particular case, I happen to have played two spell symbols that are uh, primal, that, so therefore I get to roll two dice. And then I'm gonna add those numbers together and see what benefit I get. If I roll just a one through four, I just deal one damage to the foe that holds the standee. If it's five through nine, however, I deal two damage and I take the standee. And if it's 10 or more, I deal five damage. I take the standee and keep, which means I get to keep the shark around and he'll do his attack again next turn. And I still get to play other spell cards. The harvesting card lets me deal, uh, Take, let's me take the standee and deal a damage to each foe for every dead wizard. And if there are no dead wizards, I gain two blood. And Queen of the Dead's uh, card over here says, deal two damage to each foe who already acted this round. And as a reaction, if I die before this card resolves, I get to draw two extra dead wizard cards. So you see all these cards have different special effects and you ideally want to play them all together. Let's take a look at some other ones here. You have Goldilocks, Sparkling, Cockatwice. Uh, I'm not going to go through every card, but they all have um, different uh, effects. Uh, the Sly Rollers, Greedy Ba Zerker. The Sly Roller actually lets you roll a die as well, and uh, may let you get uh, the standee or draw a treasure card and so on. Uh, Raw Hydra's Nonchalant Shub Nigroth. <laughs> so there's a little bit of Cthulhu in the game. ADHD's Inflamerating Rock and Roller, or... Myth Gurgle Lichotep's Burn Zerking Jelly Square. <laughs> so you can kind of see the uh, mood and tenor of this game. Now, one, a few of these cards mentioned treasure. I'll show you some of those. Treasure cards are just really cool, like artifact type things that you're able to keep in front of you and use whenever their special ability applies. Excuse me, let me fix that. So for instance, you have the first loser trophy which says if your death ends this game, you gain three blood and you can pay a blood to heal a hit point only once per round. Dr. Shrinky's Couch. When you play a wild magic card, you reveal cards until you find two cards of the type you're looking for and then add them to your spell. And I'm not going to read all these, but they're funny. Fish Hands, Triple Barrel Shotgun, Glutton's Regalia, the Golden Handcuffs, which lets you get extra treasure. So lots of different things there. And here I'll show you some of the uh, Dead Wizard cards as well just to give you a taste of what those can do for you. You have a uh, glassy, classy in repose, which uh, re you resolve this as soon as you die. You get to gain two blood, and if you were the first wizard killed this round, you gain two additional blood. The uh, just rewards uh, resolve now. Some of them are resolved now. Some of them are not. But this, these happen to be uh, for every last wizard standing token in play, uh, gain one blood. And if you do don't have any, if you don't have any last wizard standing tokens, uh, and start the next game with a treasure. And Hounds from Hell, uh, you see these are kind of keyed into the themes of the different wizards, by the way. Uh, keep this card in front of you until you make a power roll with a creature. Add one die to that power roll. So the way the game will work is that you'll cast your spell and uh, keep any cards that you're going to keep or not. Then once you've dealt your damage to whatever 
foes are getting dealt damage. You clear out the cards and then you start a new round. Playing cards from uh, your hand and hoping that you go first and blast the other wizards into oblivion. Every time that you are able to be the last wizard standing, you gain a glass wizard standing token. And if you're the first person to gain two of those, then you win the game. If you do a shorter game and just go for points, then you add up points whenever you kill a wizard or are the last wizard standing and so on. That is a quick and dirty run through of Epic Spell Wars. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Now, let me say, by all rights, I should hate this game. It's really simple, it's very random, it's got take that mechanisms. Well, actually, let me correct myself. It's take that. That's what the whole game is, is Boom, I'm dealing a lot of damage to you. There's very little you can do about it. And I'm sometimes just arbitrarily choosing that because of what the card tells me to do. Like maybe I really want to target a particular player, but instead I have to target the highest uh, strength person, which is the highest life points or the lowest life points person. So in some ways the game is even on just a little bit of autopilot. So why would I even give this game the time of day? Because at the end of it all, it actually is fun. I hear the term beer and pretzels game bandied around a lot, and I hate it so much. I mean, because people overuse it, I really have come to hate that term, but it really applies to this game. That's how I feel about it, because it is just light fun. It is. It can be fast if you don't let it drag out too long, and I do dig the artwork. That is the one thing everyone talks about this game. Uh, that's the first thing they bring up uh, with regards to the game is that artwork, which is insane and grotesque and at times very offensive. And some of it is really lowbrow humor that I'm not totally into. But at the same time, I do like it. I like how unique that it looks. And I like that it's, you know, it is funny at times. And it's just like nothing else that I have. And the fact that they actually incorporate that artwork into the gameplay by assembling the three cards together, something they don't need to do, but it was a nice graphic design choice, and it adds just a tinge of theme to an otherwise just take that themeless card game. Uh, and I do like some of the mechanisms, that whole uh, aspect of choosing the different cards and um, the more spells that you choose, the longer your spell takes to go off, but you're going to do a lot more damage and effects, and maybe you really need that, but if you're really low on health and you want to use a healing spell, or you just need to kill someone before they kill you, maybe you have to risk doing one or two cards, and then you have the wild magic cards, and there's a whole aspect of even if you do play your three cards and everyone plays three cards, the creature, the which in this game is nothing but creatures for the final spell, um, the delivery system, but that creature having a higher or lower number can also influence your choices. So despite how simple the game is, there is a certain amount of strategy to be had, but don't get me wrong, <laughs> it's not a complex thinky game, it's more about just the experience and having fun with it. But I did, I did enjoy that, I like how you there's the catch-up mechanism of getting really awesome dead wizard cards. Hopefully awesome. Not all of them are that great. But if you die, you get to take one of those at least. So it gives you a leg up in the next round of play. I will say that, as I was mentioning before, the game can be short if you let it be short. But if you go by the rules as printed, where someone has to get, I believe it's two dead wizard tokens first, that can be very, very long, especially if you're playing with up to five players. So you probably don't want to do that. I think this game works really, really well with three players. And I think that if you just play to, uh, just pick a certain amount of rounds. If you just do a, a best of three, and if there's a tie, then whoever has the, whoever, I don't know, talked in the most annoying voice, character voice the whole time wins. <laughs> My point is, don't take this too seriously. I think it's fun, I think it's light. If you're with the right group of people that isn't too turned off by the artwork and can appreciate it, I think you'll have an even better time. And if you actually follow the rules and how they say to say certain words and, you know, booming voices and to re if you're not playing every card to replace it with other ridiculous words, I think there's a lot of fun to be had here, at least at the price point. I haven't played it with the original game, so I don't know how well they mix. Probably not that well, but there, especially if you have played the original, you're going to be right at home with this one, though, I think. The only thing they changed was the creatures, which is cool that they can stick around and start keep doing more damage for you. Uh, but no matter what, I think if you don't take the game too seriously, it's good. It's not fantastic, it's not like overwhelmingly great, and it's not going to set the world on fire. But there is fun to be had here. That is Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards Rumble at Mount Tentacle. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. 
BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.